Our scripture today is Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. This is the Common English Bible. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten young bridesmaids, who took their lamps and went out to meet the groom. Now five of them were wise, and the other five were foolish. The foolish ones took their lamps, but didn't bring oil for them. But the wise ones took their lamps and also brought containers of oil. When the groom was late in coming, they all became drowsy and went to sleep. But at midnight there was a cry, Look, the groom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. But the foolish bridesmaids said to the wise ones, Give us some of your oil because our lamps have gone out. But the wise bridesmaids replied, No, because if we share with you, there won't be enough for our lamps and yours. We have a better idea. You go to those who sell oil and buy some yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the groom came. Those who were ready went with him into the wedding. Then the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore, keep alert, because you don't know the day or the hour. Having enough can be a big deal. Just to ask any of our Wednesday night dinner teams, they will tell you that not having enough food is their greatest anxiety. It's the fear that causes us to buy two of something when we probably only need one. It creates a lot of social turmoil when people become fearful that they won't get a big enough piece of the political pie. Having enough is something most people are willing to invest a lot of energy in. And here Jesus is addressing this in a parable. Parables are metaphorical stories fiction told to make a true point. So we need to ask ourselves who the players are. The bridegroom is Jesus. That's who we wait for and seek. The bridesmaids are us, wise and foolish, prepared and unprepared. Who we most relate to could change depending on the day or situation. But what is the oil? What does it stand for in this story? This may be the only time that Jesus said keeping something extra for yourself is a good thing. You may remember that Jesus sent out his disciples with only the clothes on their backs, telling them to take nothing. He told a parable about a greedy farmer who tried to hoard his abundance for himself and gave up his life. He explained to us that the birds of the air neither sow nor reap, but their heavenly parent feeds them. He instructed us that if we have two coats, we should give one away. But here, we are called to keep something extra for ourselves. Why? What's the oil? What is it that we should seek, store, and guard for ourselves? What is it that we cannot share? What is it that we need to have on hand for when Jesus comes to us? Is the oil discernment to see him? Wisdom to follow him? Peace to experience his love and forgiveness? Notice that these are things we must cultivate for ourselves. We cannot share them. We cannot give them to someone like a plate of cookies. We cannot buy them at Superval or Snyder's or even order them off Amazon. Maybe the oil is what we gain from relationship with Jesus. And a funny thing about that oil, it looks different for each of us. In Bible study last week, Someone commented that they experience God best in nature. Being outdoors in God's beautiful creation brings them close to their creator. 
That's oil that fills the lamp of the heart. For some, it is the oil of fellowship. There are people who long to eat with others because that's what fills them. This is why I keep harping on coming to church for your meal on Wednesday. If you do, you will engage in a ministry of presence that fills hearts and lives with fellowship. Others fill their lamps on scripture, reading at least a little most days. For some, it might be prayer or music or acts of kindness. The key is to figure out what oil is for you. And maybe it's a different kind of oil depending on the day. But whatever that is, soaking your life in it, filling your lamp so it can burn brightly. Your oil is whatever makes your lamp shine the brightest. You might find that's hard for you. Our American work ethic can really be an obstacle for us. The idea that spending time and energy on myself is selfish, unworthy, or a waste of time. Jesus, who often spent time alone in prayer, filling his lamp, would like you to get over that. Sometimes the demands of a job, home, and family simply distract us or contract our time in such a way that we feel we have nothing left. That's ironic, isn't it? We have nothing left, and so we don't fill ourselves, and then we have nothing left. The only answer to this is to put on our own oxygen mask first, so we have the strength to serve others, to carve out the time we need to fill our lamps, make it a priority, and stick with it. I don't know who it was, but someone said something to the effect of, all we can do is daily stand under the waterfall of God's grace. Grace is a waterfall, an ever-flowing abundance of God's love and mercy and forgiveness. If we take the time to purposefully stand in its spray, we will be soaked by it. It will fill every aspect of our lives. God wants you to have a full lamp. God yearns to fill you up with blessing. And God has infinite ways to do so. Ways that will work in your life if you seek them and surrender to them. When we look at the five foolish bridesmaids, it's easy to simply blame them for not bringing oil. They were unprepared and got left out in the cold because of it. But I'd like to look at this in a different way. Maybe their sin wasn't that they didn't have enough oil. Maybe their sin was that they left. They got up and walked away from the invitation the bridegroom had extended. What if they had stayed, even with lamps that were out of oil? What if they hadn't looked at Dollar General, which isn't even open at midnight, for something to fill them? What if they had stayed, admitted their lack of preparation, and sought forgiveness and mercy? Wouldn't Jesus have welcomed them anyway? Doesn't he always welcome us? when we turn to him in humility. Wouldn't he who said, I am the light, have filled their lamps for them? Wouldn't there have been enough light for everyone because Jesus was present? We aren't perfect. Jesus knows that and accepts and forgives us anyway. If your lamp is running low, don't go looking in places that can never fill you. Dollar General, scrolling on your phone, cleaning house, working longer hours, whatever. We don't look elsewhere for what can only come from him. If your lamp is low, turn to Jesus 
and persevere in seeking his blessing. We stay in touch with him by whatever oil fills us. I said before that we cannot share this oil. There is no way we can just hand people peace. We can't grow someone else's relationship with the holy. We can't give our oil to someone else. But if your lamp is burning brightly, it will light up the whole room. Empowered by your oil, you can shine the Christ light for others. And maybe the light that you shine will help them find their own oil. Maybe you can help them see the waterfall of God's grace and show them how to stand under it. In Jesus, we have enough. Enough grace, enough forgiveness, enough peace and joy. So persevere. Stay in touch with the one who fills you with blessing. And then burn brightly with his love so that the world sees by his light. What is your oil? How will you be filled with it this week? Let us pray. Creator God, we confess that we often don't take time to fill our lamps. We get distracted by the busyness of our lives. We look for hope in places we will never find it. And we fail to stay in touch with you. In your mercy, forgive us. And by your grace, free us from old habits and attitudes that keep us captive to things that don't fill us. Lead us to your oil of renewal and resurrection that we would be empowered to shine brightly with your love and lead others to your light. In the name of he who is our light. Amen.